This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, um, we're still looking at Chapter 13 of the free lecture notes of Paper F9. And in the previous lecture, we looked at what we call financial gearing, which uh, I was explaining how the way we raise finance can create more risk for the shareholders. And the more debt finance we raise, there is more risk to shareholders because of the fixed interest that's payable each year. Uh, in this lecture, we're looking at what we call operating gearing, which is showing how, in fact, any fixed payments each year make things more risky. And this is nothing directly to do with the way we raise finance. It's the way a company is structured. And to show what I mean, look at example three. Companies A and B both have sales of 100,000 a year, and they both have costs of 60,000 a year. So they're both making the same profit of 40,000. However, company A has structured its costs so that 50,000 of their operating costs are variable and 10,000 are fixed. A company B, although in total their costs are the same, 20,000 of their costs are variable and the other 40,000 are fixed. And it says, calculate the percentage change in profits in both companies that result from, first of all, an increase in sales volume of 10%. Well, let's look what will happen if next year the sales volume goes up. Then, of course, if the sales volume goes up by 10%, it's currently 100, it'll go up to 110,000 in both cases. However, if the sales volume goes up, then surely we sell more, we have to produce more. And if we produce more, the variable costs will go up as well by 10%, the extra volume. And so in the case of A, variable costs are currently 50. So if they go up 10%, they'll go up to 55. In the case of B, variable costs are currently 20. Uh, they go up by 10%, they'll go to 22. And so the profit before fixed costs or the contribution in the case of A will be 55,000, in the case of B will be what? 88,000. Uh, they've both got fixed costs, of course, but by definition, the fixed costs will stay fixed, whatever happens to the volume. And so, in the case of A, the fixed costs will be 10,000. In the case of B, they'll remain at 40,000. And therefore, the operating profits, uh, A, 45,000, B, 48,000. So in both cases, higher sales volume, if we sell more units, obviously we end up with more operating profit. But what's the percentage change in the profits? Uh, in the case of A, remember they were 40 and they've gone up to 45 on an existing 40,000. So they've gone up by 5,000 on 40, 12.5%. Whereas in the case of B, um, they were 40, they've gone up to 48, so they've gone up by 8,000 on an existing 40. They've gone up by 20%. And so, in the similar sort of way as with financial gearing, the fixed 
costs. The more the fixed costs are, the more the profit changes due to and changes in sales volume. And of course, there is risk. You know, that's what happens if sales volume goes up by 10%. Company B is in a better position. The fixed costs stay fixed, and so the profit goes up even more. But the risk is, of course, um, that we're never sure what will happen to the sales. What happens if sales fall by um, part B, 20%, sales volume down by 20%. Uh, the sales are currently 100. If they fall by 20%, the sales fall in both cases to 80,000. But if sales volume falls, production falls, the variable costs fall. They'll fall by 20%. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Yes, 20%. They'll fall by 20% as well. So A, they're currently 50. 20% is 10. They'll fall to 40. Whereas B, the variable costs are currently 20. 20% 20 is 4, so they'll fall to 16. So the contribution, sales less variable costs, profit before fixed costs, uh, A's contribution falls to 40. Uh, B's contribution falls to 64. But of course, the fixed costs, in both cases, by definition, stay the same. Uh, A's fixed costs were 10. B's fixed costs were 40. And so the operating profits, uh, A, 30,000, B, 24,000. So in both cases, clearly, if sales volume fell, profits fell. But the percentage fall this time in profits. A, currently they're making 40. It falls down to 30, so it falls by 10,000. A fall of 10,000 on existing 40 is a 25% fall. Uh, whereas B, they're currently making 40, it falls down to 24, so it falls by 16,000 on an existing 40. 16 on 40 is a fall of 40%. So appreciate when we're talking about risk, we're talking about the risk of ultimate, for shareholders, of ultimate dividends fluctuating. For getting financial gearing, dividends fluctuate due to profits fluctuating. As profits go up, dividends go up, profits down, dividends down. And why do profits go up and down? Because the sales volume is never certain. Sales volume next year may be higher, may be lower. But as you can see from this illustration, and make up other figures yourself by all means. But as the sales volume goes up and down, I've said profits go up and down, but the more the fixed costs are, the more the fluctuations in profits will be. B has higher fixed costs, so when profits went, uh, sorry, when sales went up, profits in B went up more than in A because of the fixed costs. But it works both ways. When sales fall, profits in B go down more than they did in A. Again, because of the fixed costs. So the fixed costs, in all cases, create more risk. With financial gearing, the fixed costs exist because of um, the way we've raised the finance. With operational gearing, um, 
the risk increases because of the way we've structured our costs. And it is quite practical. You see, if sales are increasing, then surely the more fixed costs you've got, the better. Good example A, uh, yes A. If sales are increasing, the more you've got fixed costs, the more profits will increase, which is great. But the risk is that if sales decrease, then of course, the more the fixed costs are, the more the profits will suffer. If sales are going down, you prefer your cost to be variable. And I say it is very practical. I used to um, work for one of the big training companies in the UK. They had offices all over the UK and I was in charge of the London office. Um, and the company got taken over and a, a new managing director of the whole group was put in place who didn't know much about the business actually but I think he'd read a lot of textbooks and at the time student numbers were going down a demographic thing student numbers were falling so sales volume was falling and of course if sales volumes falling look at uh, example two the fewer fixed costs you've got the better you prefer your costs to be variable and so he set about doing it you know we've got lots of tutors paid fixed salaries and so he went decided oh we'd have to sack the majority of the tutors and then re-employ them um, paying them on a daily basis so it turned into a variable cost they were only paid <coughs> excuse me for the days they actually taught and of course they were all terribly upset and it cost a lot of money because sacking the tutors meant paying them what we call redundancy so it was an expensive operation but it did mean that the cost of the tutors became much more variable uh, we also owned our own buildings in london a fixed cost. So he decided we'd sell the buildings and instead we'd rent lecture rooms as we needed them, turned it into a variable cost. And again, that cost a lot of money. Uh, building prices uh, were low at the time, so we we're losing money on the building. And all that took quite a while, but he did make the costs a lot more variable, which if sales are falling is attractive. The only trouble is, by the time he'd done all that, suddenly student numbers started to increase. And of course, um, if sales volume's increasing, you'd prefer to have more fixed costs. And so then he said, ah, oh, ah, ah, uh, let's start paying the tutors fixed salaries. And of course, they didn't want it anymore. They were earning much more being paid by the day. And he said, ah, now let's stop renting rooms, let's buy buildings. It, it was all rather ridiculous. So that was an extreme example. But I hope I made the point. Fixed costs of any nature make things more risky. And the two uh, different reasons. One is here, the way you structure your running costs, your operating costs, um, do you pay fixed salaries? Do you pay people by the day? Variable fixed. The other reason for having fixed costs is the way you raise your finance. Uh, the more you raise from debt borrowing, the more fixed interest, the more risk to the shareholders. Uh, finally for this bit, measures of operating gearing um, as I've written below, there is no standard measure, to be honest. There are various ways you could look at it. Uh, it's looking at the effect of the fixed costs. One way is to look at fixed costs as a proportion of variable costs. However, the way the examiner currently prefers it, in the past he did it lots of ways, but currently the way he prefers it, um, the operating gearing. It's the contribution divided by the operating profit. 
So if you look back at the original example, on the current position, A, the contribution, the sales less the variable costs is 50,000. The operating profit is 40,000. So 50 divided by 40 is 1.25 or 125%. Whereas in the case of B, the contribution sales less variable costs is 80,000. The operating profit is 40,000. And so the ratio is 2 or 200%. So the greater the operating gearing, the more risky things are. B is a more risky company. It's great if profits are, uh, if sales are growing. It's a problem if sales are falling. Okay, well, I'll leave that one there. The final bit of the chapter is other financial ratios, which are slightly related to the gearing, but that'll be in the next lecture.